thought we'd reread this sentence and see if you remember how to read that kanji down the bottom and what the sentence means. Hey, uh, hakari ga ore no me ni uh, machi no sugata o kimashita. The shape of the town. Oh, no, no, the reflection of the town. I'm yes. sorry here. Um, reflection, I totally forgot the reading for. Yeah, that is. Or, uh, 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 and you're right, hikari for the top. Hikari. Or is it akari? Ma, hikari. Uh, mani. Um, akari has different kanji. Akari, right there. So, hikari. Ooh. They both mean light, though, right? They do, yes. But akari has light for um, dawn. And hikari is this light. Ray of light. Hikari ga ore no me ni. The light that hits my eye. Hi. What does the light reflect into his eye? The light reflect machi no sugata o utsu ushimas. Ushita. 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 Right, Mani? Ushita. Yes. Yep. The light reflects the shape of the town into the eye. And I just assumed this was a good sentence because I'm like, that's how light works. They jump and reflect objects. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. Right. Um, kugumoru, which is a u verb, means muffled. Kugumoru. Well, specifically, it is to muffle, but like with a ga, to be muffled. Kugumoru. Muffled? Like a sound muffled? Yes, like a sound being muffled. <laughs> kind of noises. Um, hmm. what is the ta form of this guy? Kugumotta. Kugumotta. Perfect. Okay. Um, do you know how to read this word? A. Good guess. So it is A when it's married, like an A kyo, which is effect. Do you know how it's read when it's all alone? Ah, uh, it's shadow. So it it's, is shadow. Um, kage. Yes. How about this word right here up at the top? It's uh, hono. Perfect. Or himura. No, you're right. Hono. Wait, what is that? What is that word for flame? Hono. Oh, oh, no. oh, no. Okay, so You're it's right. oh, no. Okay, now you get to go read the sentence. Hono ga tonneru no. This one you taught me last time. So mm -hmm. it, it it's kabe, but it's it it had the um, the I forgot what the word you say, but the voicing changes, so it got uh, in this. So kabe would normally be gabe, and this one was an exception to that rule. Ah, <laughs> but so it, it was a confusing. It. it was an exception. It was annoying. It was like how so, dare it be kabe and not gabe. Uh, however, it does have so, a similar single reading. So since kabe is single, that means the other rock word must also be single. Hi. So this is not a case of marriage. This is just cohabitation this is, between yes, friends two with single kanji. So two single two bros. Shikata. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, definitely like cohabitation here. So ishikabe ni. Wow. Ore <laughs> I just had a philosophical moment going oh. off in my head. Sorry, sorry. Um, ore tachi no. Um, uh, shadow, uh, kage, kage o utsushi. Uh, neburi, neburi no tsue ga kon, kon to tsugumota, meaning muffle. Tsugumota on, but it's not on, this is a single reading, so it's oto. Hi. Kugumota oto o tatteru. Tatteru here doesn't mean to stand up, but it means that the sound occurred. Hi. So the sound was muffled 
and it has the sense of corn, corn, right. and the sound is that of the sue, right, of neburi. Perfect. So yeah, uh, so tateru is a sound of some kind of inhabited object like a tree, his staff, something like that. So humans don't tateru, but doors tateru and stuff. So in this case, his staff is tateru, ta tateru. Um, and konkon hmm. is the sound it makes, probably when it's hitting the floor, right? Being logical. Um, Hi. So ho ho no ga toneru no ishi kabe ni. So the flame uh, reflect utsushi. Uh, it reflect the the shadows. Um, the oretaji, our shadows, onto the wall, but this specifically are stone walls. Yes. Of the tunnel. Perfect. Yep. He he describing two things here: the imagery of the shadow, and then in the second clause he described the sound of Neburi King. Hi. And do you have any idea why we have this version of and here rather than like te and? Like, why is it utsushi and not utsushite? The author is saying that the first clause are not related yeah. causally to the second clause. The yeah. shadow doesn't the have anything to do with The shadow's nothing to do with making sounds. So, no relation. It's not totally a causative relationship, though so does work well. Because, like, um, I could plan I'm going to make fish today, but I would still use te if I said I went to the store to buy fish so I was going to make sushi for dinner. Um, it's just, like, the idea with the she is that there shouldn't really be a link between the actions, but it doesn't have to be a causative link. It just has to be, like, a logic link. Like, the ideas I mean, should be kind of similar. I think the she here is, is in a way, he's itemizing he's listing things yeah it's just a generic way to say and it, it doesn't I, insinuate anything well te insinuates linkness um so just why okay, you need one uh, other in almost all cases you can substitute she and te um hmm. i just am pointing it out because you asked like two sessions ago so if you point it out it's more likely you'll notice when's one used versus the other you know hi hi um, do you know how to read this, this word? Thing yeah. Is totsuzen. Hi, hi, hi. Perfect. How about Meaning this word? Naturally. Uh, you're oh, thinking about shizen. Oh, this means suddenly. Totsuzen. Totsuzen, suddenly. This one is to wrap around. Hi, hi, hi. Ku, ku. Good guess. Um, kurumu. Kurumu. Ku, ku. Oh, yeah, that's right. I thought of myself. Uh, has the same kanji as this guy. In this context, it's actually tutu. Tutu Um, tutu. I'm not sure how you're supposed to know wins win, but I know tutu here. Uh, I, I don't know why. I'm sorry. And and this tutu marete means that the flames. What what is so the? See how there's a knee here for mm -hmm. tutu. So tutumu with maredu is passive. So it means the flames are doing the wrapping. The flames wrap um, around the te. Because it's a magical um, flame right here. So, the, so right now where we've left off is Nebuni took out his magical stone and in the handhold of the magical stone, some kind of magical fire is coming off of it, enveloping his hand. Um, Nebuni, though, is still continuing to walk with the thing around his fiery stone and we are following behind nebody and this fire that his hands engulfed in is now um, causing their shadows to be reflected against the walls and of course nebody is still walking so we hear a gum gum noise that happens to be muffled for some reason um do you know what arawareta means arawareta here we have another so here we have an added and therefore it it is another one of those passive self-directed that's action. a good guess it's actually i mean i mean it 
Ha, Şimdi ha. yavaş. Wa. Bu. No, I, I, I see the kanji right there. Arao is to wash. So that's where it's coming from. So to wash into passive form would be arawa ne do. That's why that was popping up. Did I spell it more than a second ago? Because now it's popping up correctly. Arawa ne do. Wait, why is it to appear and to wash are the same reading? Well, sometimes words just have the same meaning. For example, to tsukamareru could be that word, or tsukamareru could also be um, that word, right? These are two totally different words, but they happen to conjugate the exact same way in this very specific instant with um, tsukamu, to grab, and um, tsukamaru, to capture, right? So to grab can be tsukamareru in passive form, and tsukamaru to be tsukamaru, tsukamaru, sorry, in um, passive as well. To be captured, to cap, to grab, to be captured. So it just happens sometimes. Um, you're be, basically never going to see like to be washed. To be washed. Pretty simple kanji so too. So the kanji to will pop up. Is to appear. Yes, this is to appear. Hi hi. Um, do, how do you read this word on the bold? This is kao. Perfect. Um, can you read this whole little sentence for me? Uh, here we have shin, uh, um, say, say men. Good guess. Showmen. Showmen. Hi, showmen. Showmen ni wa kyodai, not tetsu no mon. But it's not mon. No, it, it is mon. mon. It is mon. Right. Oh, so it's, it's not mon. The question mon. Oh, sometimes there isn't a single reading. Sometimes yeah. there's a narrative that's used for both instances, both when it when it together with other kanjis and when it by itself. It's still mon. Yes, there's a lot of kanji that will only have one reading, and there's a lot of kanji that will have two reading. And this is kind of helps you with knowing what how to read things when they're con connected. For example, waki only has one reading, and michi has two, right? Michi means path. So when you combine them together with waki, it becomes waki michi, rather than something then, 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 rather than like sando, which is a a path toward a shrine. It's a very random word. So we got side street path toward shrine. But you see michi. And do are the two readings of the one kanji, but waki only has one reading. So mon only has one reading. So when mon gets married, it's normally going to be married with somebody without their married reading. So they get the two buddy readings, like we saw earlier with ishikabe. Versus sho hmm. has two readings with sho and tadashi, right? Uh, for correct Hi. tadashi. So the, it's always kind of good to know what, what has like two readings versus like what has multiple readings versus one reading. Because if you know it has one reading, it's probably going to do some interesting things when you make compound words with it. But yeah, this is mon for um, gate. But I was thinking you're confused by mon for the word for question because they look similar, which does have multiple readings like shitsumon is that one. On its own, it's actually supposed to be read as toy. Oh, yeah, so that, that's the question one, which looks very similar. They have the same one. But yeah, this is gate. Hi. So here is a tetsu no mon. Hi. And it's a kodai. It's a kodai na tetsu no mon. Hi. So it's a large um, steel gate. A large iron and gate. A Where large iron gate. And that is the showman. That is the right. main entrance. Yes. Perfect. That is at the front. Um, can you read this for me? Iri ga arawareta. The, so uh, this the... is Iri. How do you think that second word is read? Iri guchi ga. Hi, hi, hi. So we have the voicing here. Yes. Um, 
iriguchi ga arawareta, meaning the the entrance appear. Perfect. Okay, now you get to go read the sentence from the book. Shibaraku shite. Tonneru no sen ni no saki ni. It's a single reading. Saki ni tetsu no mon ga arewareta. So the iron gate appear. Um, Tonneru saki ni is right in front of, like further ahead Hi. of the tunnel. Further up ahead at the tunnel. Shibaraku shite. Now, shite is just suru. What is shibaraku? I uh, would do shibaraku of... shite together. It means like after a little bit. After a little. Oh, so it's a time phrase. It is a time phrase. It is, though, like you said, it comes from sudu and stuff. And this te is te form, which is the and in a so like way. So after some time passed, this then allowed the, the gate to appear in front of us, right? There's a logic connection between the time passing as they're walking and a gate suddenly appearing in their sight. Um, if they didn't continue on doing something, then the gate would not have appeared, right? But it's not like the walking caused the gate to appear, right? It's not like the magical, it's not like magic or something like that. It just means because we moved forward some that allowed us to see the gate because the gate done. Hi. Um, hi. The gate yeah. appear. So shibodaku is a, I guess, adverb that means like a little bit. So mm -hmm. to do a little bit. And it's normally used like kind of like mama, right? Where a previous day of condition is kind of continuing. So it could be used like sit here for a while and then it does that. So it's kind of like a time phrase for continuing previous action. I don't like it. So mama mama de. But it just, it Mom, feels like I, after a while. I just noticed something in the English that kind of um, intrigued me. So when we translate this, uh, this monga arawareta to the English, it basically means the gate appear. Hi. And I always thought that in English, there are no, there's, there are no these passive verb, but apparently there is a passive verb here. It's appear. The gate appear. The gate is doing the action of appearing without any. any you're right. Talk. You can't do that. But there's a lot of ways to say passive in English, but you're right. Peer does not allow to be not passive. It's like, for example, to wake up. I wake up is the passive, right? I wake up. But if I say I wake up, Sam, suddenly it's, it's active. Positive. That's active version, yes. Yeah, so like the our, a lot of our verbs will have like a add to that. But you're right, appear. You can't say the gate appeared Sam. Right. The Sam Sam appeared rock. It it doesn't so work. This is this is a clear case where the English and the Japanese is doing exactly the same thing yeah. grammatically. It's, You'd have to add a word here to Sam made the gate appear which is grammatical right here to use the word make to turn a passive word into a active word. Hi. That's Project our, that. that's this our grammatical thing. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. Good, good job. Think about that. Cause I, I, I never remember the English Hi. ones. I was like, yeah. Huh. Cause I, I, I like how this short phrase, the, because if, if another student, if you came across this concept for another student, mm -hmm. they, they might, they might be like, oh, I don't have anything to relate it to, but then you can bring it up. Well, the gate up here is yeah. definitely passive. And it's clearly stated here that there's no causing agent. Like we don't know who causes the gate to appear. Oh, so. The gate just appear as a matter yep. of fact. Um, with Arawaredu in Japanese, it's not really like appearing like deru. This is just like a random note, even though we're translating as appear, it's 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 like it always existed normally when Arawaradu is here, but like your visual ability to perceive the object has changed. Uh -huh. That it's makes perceptible. Sense. Yeah. It's, it's always there, but yeah, now so you now you know. Now you can it. see it, basically. Now you can see the gate because you walked down the tunnel. So the gate was already here, but they, it was mm. really far down the tunnel. And that's how Arawaradu tends to be used. I see. Um so As the other ones 
like right here, right. the entrance, it's because we moved the door. So now you can see the entrance. So what I want to do is actually like to be able to see now when you could not have seen before, hmm. which appears is like the closest word to English to it, but appear in English does have a little bit of like a magical feeling to it of like teleportation, which does not actually exist in the right. Japanese version. So I just realized that now when I was hearing wow. the word, the gate so, appeared. And I'm like, why does that sound weird in English? So the, what, the, the point you try to make is that appear have both connotation of deru and awareru, but there's, there's a separation of idea here. Deru is when the object pops out into existence yeah. in front of you. So, so. Whereas arawareru is you come to the awareness of the thing that was already there. Yes. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you remember how to read this word? Um, Saksakibi. That's a good guess. I don't know what that word you just read was. It shows up in Aikyo, which is um, effect. But it, since these are both married, so it's a different reading. This means to echo. Oh, I, I think that's why I, I kind of think of saki, sa, sakibi or sakabi. It's oh, to yell. To, to yell sakibu? or something like that. To echo out. Uh -huh. Saka, sakibu, sakebu sakibu. or something. Uh -huh. Sakebu is to yell. Right. But yeah, sometimes it can mean to echo something out. Mm -hmm. Hi. This right um, here is pronounced as hibiki from hibiku. Hibiki. Hi. The first sentence in this book was had this verb. The Almost. Town, I think it was the as, third sentence, which is this one. Yeah, something the about town the town that is empty awfully echoes. This awfully one. echoes. Hibiki. Ran to shita machi wa mono oto ga yake ni hibiki. Misute rare ta yo ni wabishikatta. The town echoes awfully with noises of things. This town is empty. And it's also wretched as if it had been abandoned. Yeah, this is like around the third or fifth word sentence. Definitely the okay. first two paragraphs. Hi, hi. Habiki. He, 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 say echo again for me. Habiki. Good Hibiki. guess. Hibiki. Hi. Hibiki. 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 Okay. Let's go read the sentence. Um, I realize that the, partly the reason why we... I feel like I mixed up on the pronunciation so much. Mm -hmm. it had to do with Japanese had so few phonemes. So, so because there's so few phonemes, you you keep mixing it up. I think that's what I feel like. Um. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> okay, back to the reading. Nobody ga nani ga nani ka ii. Um, sono koe ga tonneru ni hibiku. Mani, why do you think sometimes they use koe and then other time they use oto? So, oto should not really be koe because koe is a voice normally. Um, well, oto is just sound in general, right? So the previous one, we had mono oto, so the sound of things. So it wasn't someone's voice echoing. It could be footsteps. Or previously, we saw oto was the sound of the cane hitting the floor. So oto is, is just the sounds of things that's not your voice. Well, koe could be some kind of voicing, like an animal's voice or any anything like that, like a nakigoe, human sounds. So this is mouth sounds. These are uh, non mouth sounds. Sono koe. So here then we had neburi ga nani ka i. And e here is meaning eu, not e as in yoi, as in good. Yes, this is e as in to say hi. E as in to say. And you say e, which is the root form of eu. Uh -huh. uh, um, yeah. The reason why it's doing that here is because they're changing the top, the subject, I think. I think that's the grammatical. Right. I think te, so, you have to have the same subject. Nobody said something. Hi. Nani ka. And then sono koe ga, and that voice, tonoru ni hibiku. That voice echoed in the tunnel. Perfect. Or through the tunnel. Yep. 
Nice. Um, do you know how to read this word? It means to shine. To shine. Mm -hmm. oh. so let's see. Oh, he got it right there. Kibajimeta. Sorry, mommy. I need help for this kanji. It says ka ga ya and then ku. So kagaya is the kanji part. Kagayaki. Hi. Kagayaki hajimeta. Perfect. So to begin, kagayaku. Which what does kagayaku mean? It to shine, right? Perfect. To shine, to let off light. Perfect. Um, how do you read this kanji right here? Kagayaita. Perfect. So let's go read the sentence from the book. To madoseki ga batto shiroku kaya kagayaita. Hi, kagayaita. Hi. So batto. Describe pa, pato, shiku is a kind of white that is ah, pato. In this case, I would say it's for modifying uh, kagayaku because um, uh, adverbs don't modify adverbs, adverbs that that. modify adjectives or verbs, but not. Not not adverbs or nouns. I don't think you can modify adverbs. I think that's a grammatical rule, not being allowed. So shiroku is a is a white. Hi. It's a white shine. So so. Pato. Yeah. Pato is like it pops out. Right? Exactly. That's exactly what it means. So in this case, and it's kind of it, like suddenly. Hi. Pot, pato. What suddenly Shiro. shines with a white light? Madoseki ga. Hi, hi, hi. And what do you think this to is telling us? It's saying it continued from the previous. Yeah, it basically means immediately after what just happened, which was the nanika yu. So right after Namri says something and his voice echoes, the magical stone begins to shine with a white light which is kind of funny because like two seconds before the magical stone was like on fire <laughs> illuminating the building um and it looks like this is actually where we're going to leave off for the day so i will stop